us struggle with this feeling of low energy throughout the day. Tired to the point where we're dragging through our days, barely making it through. If this is you, it's probably because you haven't started to implement some of the things I'm about to share with you. When I started to do even just a few of these things, I noticed a dramatic boost in my daily levels of energy. Okay, so the first place I wanna start predictably is gonna be sleep. It's not even necessarily that you need to have eight hours of sleep as it is you need to figure out where your body and what times your body sleeps deeply. Because you can get eight hours of shitty sleep, right? Waking up, having to get up and go to the bathroom. All of those things are gonna decrease the amount of rest time that your body's actually taking. So you need to take time to experiment, and I even did this, was experiment what times of day and morning and night feel best to me, right? Like, do you wake up and feel energized from 12 to eight? Do you wake up and feel energized from eight to four, right? You need to take time and like think about and try to figure out where you feel best because everybody is not the same. The whole thing of we all need eight hours of sleep. I mean, generally speaking, that seems to be like a good idea, but some people only need seven. Some people only need seven and a half. Some people need eight and a half or nine. It all really depends on you and it depends on the circadian rhythms that you have in your, in your chronotype. So you need to take time to experiment and find out what times a day works well for me to go to bed and what times a day works well for me to actually wake up. And you're gonna know because when you wake up, you're gonna feel like super energized, you're gonna feel great. Now, it might take some time, you're probably gonna need to at least do this for a few weeks because a lot of times we are super backed up in terms of deprived on sleep. So really take the time to try to figure out how to do that. Now, once that's done, you need to try to stick to those times on a regular basis. Like for example, don't get to the weekends and then wake up at a completely different time because that's gonna completely fuck up your circadian rhythm. So for myself, once I kind of figured out the general times that work well for me, I program that into my daily schedule to be every day I do this, every day I go to bed at this time, every time, every day I wake up at this time. And that really is gonna help because your body's gonna get a regular deep rest that is going to rejuvenate your entire body. Blue light is really gonna cause a problem for you if you're on it right before bed. Typically for myself, I like to try to get off a couple hours beforehand so that my body understands that, hey, it's dark outside, it's time to start winding down and heading to bed. If you're on your phone while you're in bed or you're on your phone just before bed or you just like watch a movie right before bed, it's sending all that blue light right into your fucking brain. And your brain like literally thinks that you're, like it's daytime, that you're awake, that you're supposed to be doing things. So even if you're able to fall asleep afterwards, you're not gonna get as like good of a sleep, you're not gonna get as deep of a rest. That's what I found for myself is really taking that time before going to bed to just clear out all screens. Just take that time to, you know, read or catch up on things that you need to do, but just get away from the screens a few hours before bed. The other key thing is once you have this sort of sleep pattern figured out, you figured out your sleep pattern, when you sleep well, you need to start really considering exercising on a regular basis. That would be every other day, every couple days at the most. And I mean like exercises in going to the gym, right? Lifting heavy weights, getting your entire system under load, under pressure and stressed. Before I started going to the gym on a regular basis, I was, <sighs> my energy levels were so much lower compared to now when I'm actually hitting the gym on a regular basis. I mean, I'm right now I'm doing probably five or six days a week, so it's quite a bit, but even just doing three days a week, I was feeling great. You feel so fucking good, and once you start making progress and seeing the progress that you're making, it really gives you that sort of um, dopamine hit and that, that boost, you just feel good. Like when you're done exercising, your whole body is sweating, it's getting out toxins, it's just makes you feel fantastic. You know, you can do this also in the sense of getting outside getting fresh air and like walking or hiking, that's really important as well. Um, because when you're in the gym, you're still inside. So I would say try to incorporate some sort of gym routine into what you're doing where it's actually lifting weights and putting your body under 
uh, stress. In terms of getting outside and getting fresh air, that's something I also try to incorporate every day, every other day, because we don't really get enough of it. We used to always be outside, if you think about it. Our ancestors would constantly be outside getting fresh air, but now we're pretty much almost all the time indoors, unless you work you know, a job that's actually outdoors. But most of us, the most of the population works indoors, uh, whether that be like in factories, offices, whatever. So taking the time to get out in nature and get that fresh oxygen and to get the cardio, I mean, that's a great time to do cardio. Drink more water. Okay, most people don't even really think of, they'll have like a few cups of water in a day and be like, oh yeah, I'm drinking water. That's not drinking water. This one water bottle is 64 ounces of water, okay? I try to drink two of these a day. So yeah, I try to drink two of those a day. And it's really easy to do that if you incorporate this with going to the gym. Because when you're in the gym, you're sweating, you're getting tired, you need water, your throat's getting dry, you know, it just, it goes well, it goes hand in hand. So if you want to drink like two of those, which is 64 ounces, that's a decent amount of water every day, try to incorporate physical activity that's really going to uh, put your body into a state of like movement because then you're going to expend water you're going to need to drink water and you're going to get thirsty it's going to be much harder to consume that much water if you're just sitting around doing nothing you're not going to feel like doing it you're going to have to force it down if you can drink about two of those a day i noticed as soon as i started doing that everything in my system started to work better okay i never used to drink that much water i drink and maybe like four cups a day or whenever I felt thirsty. But the thing is, is by the time you feel thirsty, you're pretty much dehydrated. So most people you see walking around are dehydrated. They don't drink enough water. They're always drinking um, soda and juice and sugary drinks, and they're never actually getting the full benefit of drinking a ton of water every day. And once you start to do this, everything is going to improve. You're gonna notice. So this one's gonna be really unpopular, but cut out caffeine. Uh, it's going to be really difficult for those who are addicted to it. If you, it's going to be a lot easier if you just kind of drink it just because it's like a social norm versus full on addiction. The problem is, is that caffeine really is essentially a painkiller. And although many people will tell you, oh, it's not a big deal. It's fine. Uh, I totally think that that's false for, at least for myself. Having to rely on caffeine in order to operate is a downward slope in my opinion. So if you drink it casually and you feel like you have low energy, I would say just try to drop it altogether. If you're an addict, if you can manage to reduce the amount that you drink, that would be probably helpful for your energy levels because what happens is when you're drinking it, you're, you know, you're getting those huge spikes, but then later on you're going down. So instead of having a nice, high level, steady energy throughout the day, you're doing this. And that's not effective. Now this doesn't just apply to coffee. I would say more specifically, it's caffeine in general. Uh, drinking energy drinks, Monster, Bang. Um, drinking even, even some of those teas, like certain teas, like the Pure Leaf teas, Honest teas, a lot of those have high amounts of caffeine in them, which there's nothing wrong with occasionally using that, but to rely on it every single day in order to get your day moving is not sustainable long-term. You're going to experience problems from that. And so as hard as it is, once I was able to back off the caffeine because I didn't, I wasn't ever a big coffee drinker, but I did like to drink a lot of like the teas, which gave you, you know, a nice energy boost because of the caffeine and the black tea. Once I stopped doing that on a regular basis, it was really hard at first because you feel like shit and you feel like it's not working. But if you give it a few weeks, once the caffeine is flushed out of your system, you're going to notice you have a more steady level of energy. It's not up and down, spike, drop, spike, drop. You're going to have a more steady level. And from there, you can kind of improve. But really consider cutting out daily use of caffeine. I know if you need to use it occasionally, it's not a big deal, but don't be relying on caffeine to get things done that you need to get done, right? And, and that goes for the gym as well. If you're in the gym lifting weights, don't rely on pre-workout every day in order to get you there because then your brain's gonna associate the gym with free workout. And as soon as you stop taking pre-workout, what's gonna happen?
you're not gonna have an easy time at the gym. You're gonna have a hard time at the gym. Your brain's gonna say, oh, I don't wanna go to the gym because we didn't have pre-workout. So you don't wanna rely on substances in order for you to be able to be functional in life, <laughs> which I know is kind of, it could be idealistic, but this is a tip that I think is really important to consider, even though many are not gonna to wanna to hear it. Lack of sunlight is a huge problem, especially if you live in areas in the Northern Hemisphere, if you live in um, New England or uh, Northern Europe, certain areas like that, we're not getting enough vitamin D. That's just the facts. Not enough vitamin D, not enough being outside in the sun. So get outside, like I mentioned earlier, get out, walk, hike, anytime you can get outside in the fresh air and get sunlight, even if it's cloudy, it's still gonna be very beneficial for you to be out there in that fresh air. Alongside with that, to supplement, it's really important that you take vitamin D. Vitamin D is super important for those of us who live in cold climates, cloudy climates, wherever it rains, it snows, we need to be supplementing with vitamin D. So the recommended RDA for vitamin D is 600 IUs which quite frankly is hilarious because I think that that's not even anywhere near what it should be, okay? I take 10 times that amount. And a lot of people will tell you, oh, that's too much, that's overdosing. But the fact of the matter is, if you were outside, if you were in, lived in the equator and you lived outside in the sun, you'd be getting way more than that every single day. So we are super deprived up here of vitamin D and I'd highly recommend that uh, you experiment with different amounts and test that out. But for me personally, uh, 600 is not anywhere near what you're going to get and it's going to be really hard to get vitamin D from food. So you really want to get a very high quality vitamin D and uh, don't forget also a really important thing to do is to take it with fats. You want to make sure that you take vitamin D with good fats because that's how it's going to absorb. It's a fat soluble vitamin so you need to take it with good fats so that it can actually absorb into your body. Just experiment with different amounts. You could experiment with 2,000, 4,000, 6,000. I even have heard people going all the way up to eight to 10,000 and just getting that into your system and having it absorbed because you're eating fats with it is gonna give you a huge boost. It's gonna really help you. And even if you can't notice it right away, uh, you know, you just do that for a few weeks, a few months and you look back, you're gonna definitely notice a difference. What you consume and put into your body is a lot more important than what people give it credit for, okay? For example, if you're trying to boost your energy and you're trying to find natural ways to do it, don't eat a bunch of processed foods. You need to find whole foods, okay? Whole foods is the key. You wanna find things that are closest to their natural state. When you eat a bunch of processed foods, it's low vibration, okay? And you're putting low vibration into your body. And so that's what you're gonna get out of it. You're not gonna, you can't, <laughs> you can't put a bunch of crap into your body and then expect high output, right? So try to find high quality whole foods. And yes, it's gonna be expensive, but in the long run, you're actually saving yourself money because you're gonna have less health problems and you're gonna get more output from your body, okay? You have to think of your body as sort of the chassis that's gonna carry you through the journey of life. And if you're not going to put high grade fuel in it, then you're not gonna get high output from it. That's just the way that it is. If you have the habit of going to grocery stores or fast food or restaurants and constantly getting processed low quality food, take the time to think about a way that you could get around that and start buying high quality whole foods, okay? Because that's the most natural state. It's gonna have the best nutrient profile and it's a higher level, it's a higher vibration of energy that you're putting into your body. Once I made this switch to really getting serious about what I'm putting into my body and my diet, I noticed an insane difference. That was probably one of the biggest ones in terms of all the ones I've mentioned so far was the diet because if you think about it that's kind of what we're putting into our body 24 7 is food so of course if you're going to put processed high sugar um super carb loaded foods into your body it's going to be weighed down right it's not going to be able to perform that well so think about how you can switch around your lifestyle to incorporate whole foods and find ways to do that because it's really going to help you in every area especially when it comes to the gym lifting all these things kind of interconnect to create 
the best possible lifestyle for you and to really give you that feeling of good energy throughout the day. Another thing to mention is along with having high quality whole foods is try to fill up a lot of your diet with protein. Um, use a lot of protein, a lot of healthy fats, and when it comes to carbs, try to find carbs that are low on the glycemic index, meaning pastries, most type of bread, anything that's on the high glycemic index, try to avoid that. I'm not along this whole train of completely cut out carbs, but if you're gonna have carbs, try to choose ones that aren't highly processed. When it comes to having low energy, all of these things are gonna help. And I think that if you haven't been doing them or you can start implementing them, you're gonna definitely notice a difference but also just think about your life day to day. Think about what you're doing. A lot of times we'll get in low energy as well because we're doing things that we hate to do. Maybe your job, maybe you hate your job. Okay, that's not gonna help with your energy levels. Maybe what you're doing day to day, you don't have a day that you're excited about, that you're passionate about, that you really feel like you wanna wake up and be a part of. So all these things will help, but at the same time, try to take the time to create a day that you would enjoy living in. Take the time to find a job or start a business or find a way to live your life in such a way where you can enjoy it every day. Because what's the point of being here if we're not doing that? Think about ways too to get out of your comfort zone. A lot of times when we get in the same routine and we're just doing the same thing every day, we start to get that low energy. We're not climbing up any mountains. We're not hitting any challenges. We're just staying complacent. So think about ways that you can challenge yourself. Think about different ways that you can either get into the gym or start fighting or do anything that puts you out of your comfort zone because that's gonna require you to come up to a new level, to heighten yourself up to a new level and that's gonna require another level of energy. All these things are really gonna help you and they really help me to boost your energy levels on a daily basis. And although it's not perfect and of course there are days where I feel tired, in general, I feel so much better than I used to before doing any of these things. And really, if you think about it, we're gonna feel tired. There's times where we're gonna feel tired. We're human beings, we're not made to just constantly be on the go. With this culture nowadays, it really seems like it's all about maximum productivity, maximum output. And while there's nothing wrong with getting the most out of your time, we really have to take a step back and think about the fact that we're human beings, we're not machines, right? So you're not gonna eliminate feeling tired. That's not the point of this. The point of this is that while you're awake, you're getting the most out of what you can. So these things have really helped me get to that point on a more regular basis. And of course I feel tired, of course I fall off these things all the time, but it's kind of a roadmap that you can use to put yourself back on and know if I do these things, I'm gonna be much better off than I was before. Once you've done even just a few of these, you're going to notice how much more energized you are and able to chase your goals. Speaking of goals, if you want to understand how you can stick to your New Year's resolutions and achieve your goals this year, click up here and watch this video.